Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Devin, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a pause system. Now, we're just going to go ahead and dive right in. I'll go ahead and run the game, and you'll be able to see it in action. Come on. Okay, there we go. So we have here Happy Harry, and Happy Harry is very happy about something. And Grumpy Graham over here, he's being grumpy, and he doesn't like the fact that Happy Harry is so happy. So we're, he wants to stop Happy Harry for 10 seconds because he's just, as you can see, he's clearly just bouncing off the walls here. So I'm going to hit my escape key. Boop. And look at that. We just paused the game. Uh, you know, it, we got an overlay over it. It says pause right here in uh, somewhat readable text. Um, but then I can just go ahead and hit the button again. Boop. Unpause. So that is what we're going to build today. So I'm going to go ahead and close the game back out here. Get out my notes. Now... We did that using two objects, controller underscore pause and parent underscore pausable. I'm actually going to just delete these. Yep, go away. And uh, you go away too. Delete. Okay. Okay. Now the first object that we're going to create is called parent underscore pausable. Now this is, now this is a parent object. Now, if you don't know too much about parenting, I would highly recommend looking into them because, oh my god, you can do some amazing things with parenting, set up some parenting trees, do all sorts of wonderful things. But for now, create this object because this is what we're going to use to determine what we can pause and what we, can, what we'll, and what we can't pause. So, I'm going to hit OK here. Now, these are our objects that are going to be in-game. We're going to go ahead and do this right now. Now, obviously, OBJ wee, has no parent. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, set him to parent pausable because we want him to be affected by the pause. Now, if you're wondering, hey, Devin, how come we can't just, why don't we just pause everything? Uh, well, you can just pause everything. I suppose you could. But what if uh, when you pause your game, you want to have a menu or, I don't know, maybe some effects or maybe all sorts of other fancy things? There are going to be objects that you don't want to pause. So... Using this parenting system gives you really fine control over, you know, what will pause and what won't. You know, you just got to make sure to uh, make sure to set it. Otherwise, you know, bad things happen. So we got parent pausable. And we're going to go ahead and do it to Grumpy Graham, too. So he, he, you know, so he doesn't have to worry about it. There we go. Okay. Now for the, the real meat of this particular system. We're going to go ahead and make the controller that does all the magic. So... We're going to do controller underscore pause. Is that what I yep, that's what I named it. Okay. Now, it didn't need a sprite. We're going to make it persistent because we want it to exist at all times in the game. At, at least for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. In, the, in this case, yeah. You know, if you're if you're lead enough with the code, you can set conditions of whether you can or can't pause. Obviously, you don't want to pause in the intro screen. Or you do. It's up to you. So, we're going to start off with the create event. I'm going to grab some uh, control code here and boop, pop that in. Now, we're going to put in two variables. Paused equals false. Yeah, simple enough, right? You know, it's a, it's a true or it's a boolean that allows us to track whether or not the game is paused. Easy enough. Now, scrn equals negative one. That is a little bit more complex. We will uh, get into that here in a minute. So... Next, we're going to go ahead and do the step event. Now we're going to go ahead and take this and boop, pop in our code window. Let me go ahead and get this all shrunk into place. And now we're going to crack our knuckles. Uh, my knuckles won't crack right now, but now we're going to get into the good stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the keyboard check function. If keyboard check pressed, just, just press is fine. We're going to do, you know what, let's do ORD P. So if you press the P key, oh, whoops, I do it. Oh, okay, okay, no, that's right. So if you press the P key, it will run whatever is within that code. Now, we're going to type in this little nice little hack of a expression here. Paused is equal to, equal to not paused. That is a very simple means of toggling a boolean. It just turns it into what it's not. And if, it, and if it can only be one of two states, easy enough, isn't it? So, we got that. Now we're going to put in some conditions. 
if paused instance deactivate evade object I obviously deactivated maybe if I learned how to spell there we go object now we're going to type in parent underscore pausable now let's talk about deactivating objects in game maker for a moment now when you deactivate an object it stops running all of its code all of its functions just stops running everything now that's nice that worked perfect for a pause system. And in fact, it's you can make a more complex system where things are so far away are de deactivated, so your game runs better. But yeah, another tutorial, another day. And now we're going to do else. You know what to do if not paused. We're gonna just go ahead and copy this here. Instance. Move the D. Activate object. Yeah, easy peasy, easy peasy. Yeah, look, look how look at how easy that is. So simple. Now, okay, okay, now let's go ahead and, uh, okay, I'm going to exit out here. All right, now everything should work perfect. We, we, we got a pause button, we're going to push it, and it's going to deactivate stuff, and they'll stop doing things, and then we can push it again, and then it, it just should work perfect, right? Uh-oh. Oh, right! Aha! Uh Aha! -huh. Uh -huh. I am so funny. Aha! Uh -huh. You know what? Really helps? actually having the control object in the game there we go now it can do stuff all right so now it's gonna work perfectly yeah 100 percent it's just gonna do everything that we want to do our little awesome pause system here i'm gonna go ahead and press p and oh god where'd our stuff go now remember when i said uh when you deactivate an instance it stops running all of its code well, it stops running its draw code as well. So they're not drawing themselves anymore, which means that they completely disappear from existence until we unpause them. Now, that can be okay. I mean, you, you could make that work, and it, it could actually be a pretty cool pause system. But we want to be able to obviously stop the objects wherever they're at. So, you know, I mean, that's okay, but we can do better. We can, we can, we can do a lot better. So we're going to open our object here back up. Now, remember our little uh, screen variable here? We're going to use that. Yep, we are going to use that. And we're going to hop into here, and above, very important, above this, we're going to add this line of code. I should be specific here. Um, yes. Or, or, okay. Actually, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and grab that variable. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry, I forgot to update my notes here. Okay. So, this is this specific line is for Game Maker Studio. You're going to type in sprite underscore create from surface. Applicate. Now, this one's a bit of a mouthful, so, you know, try to keep up. Surface. View underscore x view. View underscore y view view underscore with port view underscore h port false true zero zero now i'm not going to describe every single aspect about this thing yeah you, you can look it up in the in the manual but basically what this does is it takes a sc it takes a screenshot of the game and saves as a sprite so just like over here over here where we can, uh, over here, where we can add sprites into here. You know, I, I can just right click and create sprite. That's literally what we're doing, but we're making a sprite of the game window. So that's what that does. And it puts its index into that variable screen. Now, for Game Maker 8, you need to do this instead. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. See, SQRN is equal to, boom. They are basically the exact same function, except in Game Maker Studio, you got to specify application surface. And it's sprite create from screen. So, in Game Maker 8, you got to use this line of code. 
And I'm going to... Man, I wish I could fit the entire thing on the screen. What what an indulgent hog of a function. Oh, my God. There are so many... Okay, but anyways. So, there you go. And uh, I'll leave that there for a second. Once again, like I said, exact same. So, there you go. So, that's done. And we've literally done all that we have to do for this particular part. Although, okay. Very important, too. So... We create a sprite of our uh, of our game window. Now, what if we unpause? Do we need that sprite anymore? The truth of the matter is, we don't. So we use sprite delete delete. There we go. S K R N. So when we're done using it, we delete it and we reactivate all the instances. Now we are. Almost there. There's uh, one more little thing that we gotta do. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop on over to our, uh, let's see. Okay, now, another thing too. In Game Maker Studio, you're gonna use Draw GUI. In Game Maker 8, you're going to use Draw. Because obviously you don't have Draw GUI. But in Game Maker Studio, you're using Draw, draw GUI. But you know, don't, don't panic if you don't have, if you're using Game Maker 8 and you're stuck with that. Just, just, just go ahead and use, uh, the regular draw event should should work okay, and I got some you know modified code that'll work with it. So we're gonna type in if paused. So if the game is paused, what are we gonna do? Now once again we got some differences in code here. So if you're using Game Maker Studio, var w is equal to display get gui. Yep, yep, that one right there with h is equal to display get gui height there you go we're declaring and and uh defining two temporary variables just to make things a little bit easier for us now if you're using game maker 8 you got to use this instead and all, they're the exact same variables we're just giving them pretty much the exact same values, but we're getting them differently. So, if you're using Game Maker 8, use this. Now, now for the next part of the code, we want to draw sprite. Is that why I named it? Sorry, let me go back and confirm here real quick. You can never be too sure. You don't want things to blow up on you. Boom! Okay. Draw a sprite, SQ underscore screen. Okay, we want the subimage zero, and we want at the zero, zero, x, and y coordinates. Boom. Okay. Now, technically, this should work. And in fact, we'll go ahead and give it a shot. Why not? Not like we don't got all day or anything. Oh my goodness! File failed. See, so draw you action. I can't use function script name for variable reasons. Oh, wait, did I? Oh, no. You tricked me, game maker. Yeah, we, yeah, we got to add that. Okay. All right, let's try that again, shall we? My goodness. That's what I get for using the uh, little quick click thing. It doesn't completely finish it. All right, there we go. So I'm going to hit P. And look at that. It paused. I go ahead and unpause. And it continues. So, this at its very core is a functioning pause system. But what about that overlay that you saw earlier? You, you want to see how that's done? It's, it's not that hard. And in fact, we'll go ahead and do it. I mean, otherwise, why else do we specify all these variables? So, we're going to draw set alpha 0.5. Boom. Now we're going to... Okay, for for okay, uh, just like when you're opening and closing a function, when you are drawing and setting these uh, um, setting these properties, once you're done with them and once you're done with them, you gotta set them back. So we're gonna draw set alpha right back to one, boom, and then now in between it, we're going to draw everything that is going to have fifty percent alpha, which is going to be draw rec. Tango zero zero with height 
Yeah, yeah, yep, right, right here, right here. You know, we're using those variables that we specified. And false, because we don't want it to be an outline. Boom. Now we're going to draw the text. So we're going to draw set h align. Draw oh, oh my god. Dar dar dar. Okay, there we go. And we're gonna say FA center. And now we're going to set back negative one. Anything that isn't one like that, you can set it to negative one, and that's that's usually the de the default value. So now we're going to draw text with or, nope width divided by two, height divided by two. Yeah, you know, obviously we're just putting it in the center. So paused or better yet, stop. Hammer time or yeah, hammer time. There we go. Boom. And you know what? Why don't we go ahead and uh, uh, go ahead and uh, vertical align it too? So draw, set, V align, F A middle, and once again we're gonna close it. Negative one. Boom. Okay. And that should pretty much do it. So let's go ahead and give her a run and uh, see how it works. How we doing? How we doing, game? There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit P. Stop. Hammer time. So there we go. We have just constructed a functioning and yet incredibly simple pause system. I guess that would uh, pretty much sum up this uh, tutorial then. Um, now, uh, if you could, you know, by the way, uh, I, I love hearing feedback on my work. So definitely leave some, leave some, com back, some comments, some feedback, and uh, yeah. That will pretty much sum this up. Uh, thank you for very much for watching, and happy gaming!